Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the OK Grognard Show. It is Tuesday, July 14th, 9.36 a.m. Central in beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. How's everybody doing? Doing okay? Yeah, good. It is a uh, Tuesday, which makes it a cartography and world building day. And I thought that I would kind of go back to a project that I worked on some years ago. I wonder if we can get this up on the... Oop, don't want to do it that way. Mess around with the tech here. Make sure that... Uh, make sure that we get it done. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there it is. Fighting fire. Yeah. So, uh, when our pal Ernie... And I say our pal because... Everybody who games, everybody who's a gamer, there it is, knows who Ernest is. He uh, had a fire, ouch, an apartment fire, which uh, tore through a whole bunch of his stuff. And uh, sadly, he lost so many so many great uh, one of a kind one of a kind items that had been uh, collected over the years things passed down through his uh, gaming family um, things that he'd collected from his own gaming experiences going all the way back to uh, stuff that he got from Fritz Leiber and uh, in the early days of uh, Gen Con, when he was a VIP guest, hmm. it's a shame. A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff went up in smoke. Anyway, uh, he was kind of on the ropes trying to figure out what to do. He uh, stayed in a hotel for a while. He was looking for a place. He worked on, finally getting some help in regard to a place but of course you got to replace stuff right anyway fighting fire was done with an eye toward helping him out a third of all the proceeds from the um, from the sales went directly to him uh, there's a way with uh, drive through RPG or RPG now back in the day to uh, put in someone's email address if you're uh, if you're divvying up the money that comes in and you can name a percentage or an amount from each sale you know, in this case 33 percent went directly to Ernie's email and he could just log in and download it to a PayPal account or a bank or whatever or have them send him a check you could set it up any way you wanted to that was up to him but uh, of course, uh, not being an exclusive vendor with OBS, which was uh, one of their levels back in the day. I'm not even sure what they do anymore. I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference. Um, RPG Now used to have this thing where it was like 25% if you were exclusive, 30% if you weren't. And then OBS... Uh, those guys started drive through RPG and eventually created OBS and gobbled up RPG now. And I think at that point they raised it to uh, 30 if you're exclusive, 35 if you also sell anywhere else. Um, I've always had my stuff up at Steve Jackson's Warehouse 23 and some other some other locations as they've come and gone. So I've always been uh, paying 35% off the top of any sale to OBS, which is now strictly drive-through RPG. They eventually 
decided they didn't want the database issues of having two websites running in tandem and uh, keeping track of them both. Um, I don't know. It's like having two faces on the same dog, right? We saw how that went in uh, Clash of the Titans a week and a half ago, right? No, it's a week and a day ago, right? Okay. Anyway, um, it is two weeks ago. Jeez, it seems like forever. The point being, this was meant to help him out and help him out. I think it did. I appreciate everybody who uh, appreciated the work that was put into it and picked it up. Um, George Fields, in particular, had a copy professionally printed because this was only in PDF and uh, took it around at GaryCon that year and had a bunch of people sign it and then put it into the auction. I think it still winds up getting put into the auction and, and bought each year. Uh, although I think I think uh, O.D. and D. Dave is the one who keeps putting it in and then keeps buying it back. I'm, I'm not sure. He, he has some sort of a, a loop going or maybe him and one other guy put it in and then buy it up and outbid one another to get a hold of it. It is a lot of signatures and a lot of signatures you wouldn't normally have because there are uh, people in here that are depicted as an homage. Uh, I don't want to call them a parody of the people, but they are not. They are a uh, caricature after a fashion, I guess. Um, We'll flip through. We'll get to that. There's a whole bunch of encounters. Blah, blah, blah. There are... Uh, hey, Ink Dweller. How you doing, buddy? The whole uh, premise is that Ernesto the Magnificent has a tower which... Um, did we put bookmarks in this? No, I guess not. Okay. Has a tower which burns down, and then everybody in the town of Gamington on the shores of Gentle Lake throws in together, calls up all the heroes that they know, gets them all to become part of a group to then fight fire. I wrote a sort of a semi-epic poem to run alongside the adventure in Village by the Lake, home to Salmon and to Drake, her nesto restless lie awake, desirous for sleep to take, he wished but to retire, but the dreams they would not come, in his head a beating drum, there was no chance he would succumb, his thoughts a ceaseless choir. And, uh, just had a little fun writing a uh, poem that would incorporate all of these characters and uh, as if they went on this adventure and described the fellowship forged in fire. There's the town of Gamington. It's a larger version, which I'll show you in just a little bit. A brief history on it. The town of Gamington was formerly named Warburg. It was and still is the home of some of the greatest tacticians and strategists of the day. This was just before I moved up here, so I wasn't patting myself on the back. However, the folks of Warburg grew tired of the constant conflict and the toll that it took on their lands, loved ones, and lives. As an alternative to the incessant battling of kingdom on kingdom, faction on faction, or neighbor on neighbor, the Treaties of Gamington were proposed by the great wizard Papagax the Original. The idea behind the treaties was to replace actual war with tabletop versions of the potential conflicts. All involved parties had to agree to the terms and choose a neutral party to adjudicate for each battle. 
who would in turn decide on the makeup and representative forces to be used. Systems of resolution were developed by many of the experts locally and from outlying regions, and multifaceted dice were fashioned to assist in the randomization of outcomes to account for chance and luck. For 40 years, the treaties have stood and their reach has extended farther and farther, despite the occasional minor conflict often put down by parties allied in the treaties, the peace of Gamington has prevailed. So this was a sort of a uh, mock history meant to um, mimic in a fantasy medieval world the uh, ideas behind gaming on the table rather than having actual wars. The next section on the tragedy by Gentle Lake in the sleepy little town of Gamington on the shores of Gentle Lake. Tragedy has struck lifelong resident and majorly protector of the realm. Ernesto Magnifico has been driven from his tower by fire most foul. It happened on a dark night while the moon was obscured by clouds, but this did nothing to hide the culprits for they were most brazen in their assault. I won't read too much more of this. Let me read this next paragraph. Those who bore witness to the attack saw several beings wreathed in fire, perhaps even made of flame, descend from the fire peak in the Fellstone Mountains above Gamington. They touched little else in the town, but rather bore down directly on the towers, set it well ablaze, then flitted off, as quickly as they had come, the tower was all but destroyed in less than an hour, losing most of what it contained, much of it irreplaceable. So there's a whole history to the fire peak about uh, fire giants and other beings tied to fire. Let me just pop up the map of Gamington real quick to show what we got here. So here's the town of Gamington. Number one, upper left there, is Ernesto's Tower. This map was included as a back cover so that we could uh, give it a sort of a color effect and also so it could be used as a handout with the players more easily. You've got the warning bell over here, number two. Cultural Halls of Gaming, number three. And uh, some of these places are meant to be uh, homages to actual locations in Lake Geneva. The Tower Ruins, that's what's left of Ernesto's Tower. Gaming Folk, these are people that actually, Gamington folk that live here. You've got... Uh, Harrison and Jefferson, the Bookman Bread Loaves and Bakery. You've got the Butcher Block, Waynoth and Dalian. You've got Cousin Willem's Livery and Cartwright. Shades of Bill Casino there. His wife, Alisi, who runs a, an elixir shop. Dauntless Armor. <laughs> Mighty Mike there. Kunz Keep, Lisey's Elixirs, that's what I was just talking about. There's Janssen's Drinks and Dartery, <laughs> which are uh, also known as the Hovel. Potent Portals, J. Alphonse Warden. Might recognize who that is. Cinder Lou, sister to Ernesto, runs the Shrine of Survival. She's a cleric. Very nice, right? Alexandro's Wheels. And Tactics and Strategies. Womits, Gears, and Gromits. <laughs> it's another place called Speaker's Pub. 
So all of it's kind of a uh, a nod to Lake Geneva and the various people that were still living here in 2012-2013 when uh, this was written. We go through, we have a bunch of adventures. We got room for dropping in notes of your own because it's ostensibly system neutral. I ran it out of the box as a first level thing. I think it could easily easily be run as a third level. I created, or a uh, as a third edition thing, I created characters for it. Um, I did not include pre-gem pre-generated characters but I included pre-generated personalities so at the back I had a Dramatis Persona which included Ernesto Magnifico, Scott of Fellstone, Lucor True Sword Cassac Timidor Marvelous Premlaw, Leo of the Dale, Hydala of the Isles, J. Alphonse Warden, the, the Druid, Kafmir's Tanner, uh, three more I think, right? Yep, Smash Wiles, Eneg of Drebbington, and Womit Fudane. And uh, I took these personalities and I threw a character under each one. I made them fairly high-level characters. You know, let's pop that off. We got a better map than that. So we've got this one. And then, oh, we can't do that, can we? Okay. I think what we need to do is... Uh, okay. Fighting fire. Ah, here we go. This will do it. All right. What I also did was created a map that was all of the Fire Peak dungeon areas. And then I, I, I did something I didn't used to do, which was I put notes all over the map right near the various encounter areas so that this could be run fairly easily just from this map. So if you see in the upper left, this is the highest level of the dungeon or of the uh, interiors within the mountain. Um, and you'll see notes here, uh, Fire Giant Fortress, this is where they are. The sleeping cells for the fortress are crumbling and rubble conceals coins so there are coins within the various sleeping cells the interior doors of the fortress are weak but the creatures will not leave because there are creatures within that are there's a huge table that has been split asunder in the center and there are stairs down underneath here, but there's a trapdoor winch. So all of the notes, all of the uh, locations within um, the things that you would need to know as you're looking at the map and describing it are usefully placed as notations along the side of the map. So let's say you go in this entrance of the lower mines. Right, and this is almost maze like all of these old mines here, right? And then these two go off into more maze like areas, but this slopes up to a cavern of flames, which is here, detailed out off to the side. And these particular A, B, C, D, E correspond with these vents in the upper mines because this is still part of the lower mines right if you go in, you can go in an entrance here and go into these upper mines here but uh, these are rougher down below there's a chasm bridge in the lower area 
stairs from the giant fortress so there's a winding staircase that goes up to this but the trap door super heavy obviously it's a giant complex so it's not meant to be uh, wandered about by the weak right everything's heavy everything's tough doors trap doors whatever um, let's see entrance is I got a notation here the wider chamber opens to the surface where scaffolds still stand at the ready there's a point in the adventure where there's a shaft that was used for bringing ore up and down out of the mines on a platform uh, on a, with a winch and uh, so that's another entrance into from above you've got uh, let's see and that's part way down it's below this area because remember this stairway corresponds to this stairs so this entrance would be somewhere close to here higher up on the peak further down you would have if this was a slope above this cat chasm further down you would have the shaft further down still you would have the actual entrance to the lower mines fire bats swarm are disturbed by strange smells so there's what I created were fire bats they're just giant bats with a uh, fire effect I think it's a 1d3 or 1d6 I don't know and of course anything their wings touch because they're perpetually hot so the wildfires that happen on the slopes of Fire Mountain are often touched off by swarms of fire bats. The campaigns for one of these caves could include an entrance. So if uh, there are some suggestions for campaigns, this cave could include another entrance. So it is suggested if you are running this as part of a larger campaign and setting it within your own setting, there are some suggestions made for some adjustments you could make to uh, make it work better within a homebrew setting or to make it work to more more fully integrate it let's say that if players explore either of these maze roll a d6 to determine the time spent in half hour increments to discover no exits exist so yeah you can wander around in this section and it really just eats up your time and there are some time considerations built within this adventure such that uh, you know you, you don't want to be at it for years or even months or even weeks there are uh, things you need to do without uh, giving away any spoilers within a certain amount of time to uh, be successful and to avoid consequences that would be untoward to those who are adventuring and the town of Gamington oh no not Gamington when using the lower mines in a one-shot game cut them off at the spots marked with the dashed lines notice that boom 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 uh, boom right um, dash line with the campaign game GMs might wish to fill out the lower mines with additional encounters and traps one could include cave bears an orc or goblin clan numerous pitfalls or cave-ins sturges as well as a couple of added entrances where appropriate fire bats can be less aggressive to creatures that frequent the mines. so a cave bear might come and go from the mine and it's a smell that the fire bats have grown accustomed to so they won't be taking flight as a swarm when the cave bear comes and goes on its uh, hunting expeditions and other creatures like that who have learned to slip through and not disturb the swarms 
the vent of the caldera exists here. That's the caldera of Fire Mountain because it is indeed a volcano. And uh, let's see. The fire spouts, these were fun. Fire spouts are numbered 1 to 12 and flare up randomly. We get that D12 out. And flare up randomly, two of them each minute. Damage will be taken by anyone adjacent to a spout, which is doubled when a spout flares twice in a row. So all of these holes here are constantly flaring up with steam and uh, flame. Um, they're not actually spitting up magma. That would fill in this cave rather swiftly. But uh, flames from the magma below are blasting upwards. There was a time when the Cavern of Flames could be used as a forge, but that time has long since passed because, well, the creatures that are here are the creatures that are here, and it is no longer a dwarven stronghold. There you go. Fire giants fighting fire. If, uh, if it's something you're interested in, it's on drive through RPG. I will say that. And uh, let's also mention that the third of it still goes to Ernie. So even as he continues to deal with uh, various other health issues, as uh, we do all when we get older, if we're not incredibly lucky, which eh, is a relative few. February 24th, 2013 was the fire. Thank goodness everyone was unhurt, including the wonderful Casey. Casey the Wonder Dog. There you go. Particular thanks to George Fields. Got to mention George. Hard charging George Fields. Got to mention George when it comes to this or anything to do with Gary. I don't know why it's not out of battery juice, but every once in a while, this newer headset that I got just suddenly beeps and goes down. Don't ask me. Anywho, we're getting up toward the half hour anyway. We've looked at some maps and some ways of uh, presenting them, so I think we've covered our cartography uh, itch for this week, our Tuesday cartography itch. I think uh, we've also uh, done a nice job discussing a bit of world building as well. So I think we've done uh, quite a bit. Let's say this. Thanks to everybody who follows the channel. And if you chime in in the stream while you're at it. Hey, by the way, I don't know if I made it plain yesterday. It was Lost Nomad who won. The giveaway from last week so he'll be joining everybody at game hole com we got them all set up with a badge thank everybody again follow the channel chime in on the stream you might get a giveaway uh, i don't want to call it a prize but a nice little something thank you for following and chiming in that's how that works also if you're following this on youtube thank you very much please do subscribe over there it's uh, very kind of you when you do, and when you give us a thumbs up on on a uh, particular video, or give us some feedback in the comment section. Yeah, we still read them. They have not. Uh, we don't get a lot of them. If we ever start getting a lot of them and they become uh, trollish or crazy, maybe I'll cut them off, or just stop reading them. I mean, I'm so delicate. I'm such a such a uh, hothouse flower, you know me. Anywho, thank you very much. This has been the OK Grognard Show coming to you.
from Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. 9.30 a.m. Central Time every day of the week. Join us again tomorrow. Bye-bye.